race. The media had the field day at his expense yesterday, but he rose to the, the occasion with a very um, eloquent and sincere um, speech, short but sweet, to the crowd the other night in Iowa. And now he's back. He's back. He's got fire in the back of his throat, and he has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, this is something that's going to drive the left insane. They hate Donald Trump simply for the fact that he inhales oxygen, and it is truly going to be a thumb in their eye that he has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Of course, the rag that is the Daily News is saying, oh, the worst Nobel Peace Prizes in history have been Vladimir Putin, Adolf Hitler, and Donald Trump. The Daily News. I used to deliver that thing as a kid. Uh, what a rag. Rag then, rag now, except for Bill Gallo's comments, uh, comics. Um, it is truly an amazing phenomenon the way uh, the media is trying, the disingenuous media is trying to prop up Ma Barker Hillary and not focusing on her emails, yet they're attacking Trump for being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. When Obama was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, oh, the world sang. Actually, the late uh, Christopher Hitchens said, oh, in Hollywood next year, they're going to give out the Oscars before they make the movies. <laughs> That's a, a knock at Obama basically saying he hadn't done anything yet. Uh, truly amazing. Coming up in the next hour, you're going to want to keep it here at the Savage Nation because your illustrious president went to a mosque today. Radical ties to that mosque? Well, we're going to talk about it in detail. Uh, his condescending speech to all Americans who are not um, of the Islamic faith? We'll talk about that as well. Uh, truly amazing. It was an infomercial 45 minutes long. I thought I was going to have to buy a product at the end of it. Uh, let's get back to the phones. 855-400-SAVAGE. Lou paid in for Dr. Savage. Um, Skyler is calling from uh, Utah. Welcome, KKAT. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you just you said that uh, Hillary Clinton is the inevitable Democratic nominee, and I simply have to argue that. I'm I'm 20 years old, so I obviously fall into the group of millennials, and and I'm telling you, those guys love Bernie Sanders, and that's a pretty big voting demographic. It's huge. I, I really. But, him as the but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Skyler. Go on. No, I just I just I really see him as the Democratic nominee. Okay, and you know what? I wish you were right, because it would be a gift. It would be a gift to the Trump campaign if Bernie Sanders was the nominee, because he doesn't stand a chance. I have more of a chance of being elected. You have more of a chance, Skyler. Um, are, why do you like Bernie? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like Bernie. I'm saying my age group does. Oh, no. no. I, what about I, your I, friends? Have your friends, have any of your friends that you talk to directly, have they said anything? Yeah, see, the the thing is, is they they uh, they love the idea of free this and free that, you know, and and yeah, the idea is nice, but. but <laughs> Do they no? You, actually, the idea isn't even nice because when you work for something and you earn it, you know it's hard while it's going on, and sometimes it even sucks. But the 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 satisfaction. Once you get something that you have worked hard for, the reward is much better than somebody just handing it to you. Just quickly, Skyler, do they know that he wants to raise taxes through the roof so they can get all that free stuff and that somebody has to pay for all that free stuff? No, because the campaign, their whole uh, their whole deceit tactic is, oh, it's only on the rich. It's a Robin Hood tax. He's the hero of the people. Yeah. That's know. all that political correctness stuff. Skyler, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Uh, amazing, amazing. Remember, folks... They try to be politically correct because they think you're stupid. But political correctness is domestic terrorism. You are listening to The Savage Nation. My name is Lou Pate. This is the home of diseases without borders. That's Dr. Savage's latest ebook. Check it out at michaelsavage.com. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is. Michael Savage. For more than a thousand years, people have been drawn to Islam's message of peace. And the very word itself, Islam, comes from salam, peace. 
The standard greeting is, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And like so many faiths, Islam is rooted in a commitment to compassion and mercy and justice and charity. Whoever wants to enter paradise, the Prophet Muhammad taught, let him treat people the way he would love to be treated. And that coming from the president, that coming from the president who won't say radical Islam, that coming from the president who won't say fundamentalist Islam. Welcome back. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. He will return tomorrow. And remember, check out all things at michaelsavage.com and you can pre-order uh, Diseases Without Borders, the new ebook put out by uh, Dr. Savage. And also subscribe to the uh, Savage newsletter and get all your latest headlines there. And do not forget, this is the home of Borders Language and Culture, Government Zero, uh, rising on the New York Times bestseller list. Government Zero, no borders, no language, no culture. All of your needs at michaelsavage.com. I watched our illustrious president today flipping back and forth because uh, Fox News left um the, it, it was abysmal to say what the, the spectacle, disgusting, on at, at that mosque. Um, he's at a mosque in Baltimore, the Islamic Society of Baltimore. Their former imam has ties uh, not only to the Muslim Brotherhood, but uh, Northern Virginia Mosque, where Anwar al-Awlaki had preached from. And if you don't remember who Anwar al-Awlaki was, he's the um, American-born Islamic militant, and he was a senior talent recruiter online. He was ahead of his time, uh, bringing people to a radical Islam. And he was—he's um, a terrorist. <laughs> Is that the only way? I, that's the only thing I can say. We finally got him with a drone. I'm happy to say, but. The spectacle at the mosque. I'm sitting there in my own home, and I'm I'm listening to the president of the United States, my president, talk down to me and every other American as if we were in the classroom and a bunch of us were bullying one little Muslim kid. He was lecturing the nation on the issue of Islamophobia. Does he speak out for people of the Jewish faith? No. Does he speak out for Christians who are being slaughtered by Muslims? No. A little later, I saw Bernie Sanders on CNN say, well, the president's right. Um, I, I don't do as good an impression as Dr. Savage of the huckster from the Lower East Side. But uh, Bernie Sanders, oh, the president's right. More Muslims are being killed. Well, he left out that mu they're not being killed by Christians. They're not being killed by Jews. They're being killed by other Muslims. And it was a slap in the face. I was nauseated. It was repugnant. This, this speech this disgusting speech from this disgusting man, Obama, in the White House. He never once said the word terrorists. He never once said the word terrorism. He never once said the phrase radical Islam. Instead, he chose, droning on for 45 minutes, which was basically an infomercial for Islam, he said, and I quote, organized extreme elements and organized extreme ideology. As you heard there in the clip... Uh, thank you for playing that, Robert and Jim. I appreciate it. Um, Islam is rooted in peace and compassion. Well, who's doing all the bombing? Who's doing all the killing? Who's doing all the raping of little girls? Uh, it, it, it's truly an amazing thing. He actually went on to say, Muslims built the skyscrapers in Chicago. Muslims enrich our lives. They are, they are scientists, entrepreneurs, sports heroes, and he cites Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Team USA members, policemen, firefighters, members of the armed forces. It went on and on and on. It was truly disgusting. President Obama... You are a disgrace. You are an embarrassment to our nation. You are an embarrassment to the freedom of religion. He said when one religion is attacked, all religions are attacked. That is not true. Because people are attacking Christianity and you don't stand up for them. People are attacking and killing Jews in Israel. Um, one soldier was just killed today when two of them were attacked. Did I hear you speak out for them? 
there is no problem of Islamophobia in the United States, okay? You didn't hear him re- refer to the scourge of black-on-black crime in his homeland of Chicago. You didn't hear him uh, refer to radical Muslims here in the country who are building and growing in numbers in a plan to take over various communities. You don't hear him talk about San Bernardino and it was radical Muslim, Muslim fundamentalists, the husband and wife crew who who killed those 13 or 14 people at the um, Christmas party there. Uh, truly, truly an amazing phenomenon to get up there and then make jokes that Thomas Jefferson's enemies uh, tried to say that he was a Muslim and be, then joke like, ha, 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 like he's Shecky Green. Oh, I wasn't the first, you see. I mean, with good company. Let me tell you, if a Republican president ever said that and referred to himself as being in good company with Thomas Jefferson, the left-wing media would go after him and say, oh, oh, yeah, you're in good company with a slave trader. You're in good company with a slave owner. You're in good company with someone who was having sex and producing children with a slave. That's what they would say. But since Obama said it, they won't say it. Again, they're politically correct. And as I always say, political correctness is domestic terrorism. Uh, truly uh, mind-boggling. Uh, I I was I don't get angry. Okay, I uh, I, I just I, anger. I mean, I get in bad moods and stuff like that. But but uh, I broke my neck in two places a long time ago, and I was told I would never walk again. So for me, every step is a gift. Every day is a gift, and I try not to get angry. <laughs> but I was sitting there getting angry. I, this man sits there. He 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 has the gall. He just lies. He doesn't care. And he lectures the nation on a phantom uh, thing called Islamophobia. Uh, Truly amazing. Let's get back to the phones. D, on line five at uh, WMAL in D.C., welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi. You know, I am so tired of this giant contradiction. I think we have a disease without borders in our government, in our body politic, and we have to find ways to eradicate ourselves of this plague, because that's what we're dealing with on a daily basis. It's out of control. It is out of control, but what's what's more of a danger are people in this country, leaders in this country, the media in this country who allow it to happen, D. I mean, they, they're allowing them to come in, using the Syrian refugee crisis uh, as, an, as an excuse, trying to give them all types of free stuff. They don't seem to understand, D, whether you are liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican, white, black, uh, soccer fan, football fan, fan of the theater. They want you dead. They want you dead. They don't care. They don't even care if you're a Muslim. They'll kill you. Mm -hmm. They create crises. That's the whole idea, so they can push their agenda forward. It is, it is truly amazing. But, Dee, thanks for your call. We have to sit here in this country, okay, and listen to, you know, say, well, it's their culture. Like, Sharia law is normal. You know, beating and, and killing, honor killings, uh, not allowing women to show their face, not allowing um, women to learn. Um, children disgustingly being raped by Boko Haram. You don't hear anything in in the um, in the media here. Yeah, a news story here and there once in a while. No, but but if you say you don't like Hillary Clinton's shoes, there's a war on women. Uh, it, it, it is truly an amazing phenomenon. Uh, let's get to uh, Ralph. Ralph, welcome to WABC. How are you from WABC? Line eight. Welcome. President song and dance over and over, Lou, and every time he. He speaks, I feel as though I'm sitting in the classroom with a big dunce cap on, and I'm listening to him just, um, you know, just talk about these issues that I very well know about. I know where I stand on every single thing that he says. I don't need him to lead me by the nose in any, any direction, but I will say this. When Ted, I'm not comparing it to the Muslim threat, to the, um, uh, the extremist threat, but when I, when I hear Ted Cruz talk about um, preaching when he starts to preach God, and he shoves his God, which not necessarily is my God, <clears throat> in my face. I feel almost the same way because I like a country that's free and clear of religious uh, zealotry. I want to be able to believe what I want to believe and how I want to believe it, and go about my business without unfettered, without this guy telling me whether it be Cruz or Obama how to believe and what to believe. Lou. 
Uh, hey, listen, I, I, Ralph, I, I don't know how the people in Iowa, not to get distracted, I don't know how the people in Iowa fell for that whole, he said, God, Lord is with us deal. Um, he sounded like a cheap Sunday morning preacher who is just looking for you to donate to Jesus, Ralph. Donate to Jesus, and the Lord will help you through your next crisis. Um, yeah, thanks for your call, Ralph. I do appreciate it. I, I feel like I was being lectured as well. Um, hey, Adam, Bill, uh, John.